that is just not stable. You were just sitting on my calendar for September. Everything in green is me working, which I'm excited about. Um, happy to say I love my new job. Um, it's very simple, very straightforward, and I need some serious simplicity in my life right now. Also, it's a crystal store, so I walk in there and I am very close to buying the entire store. Very close. Um, but what I wanted to talk about today is, um, I, I guess we're just at the point where the videos are going to be 40 plus minutes long and that's it. Okay, that's just what we're going to do. And I've been meaning to put this episode out. I've just been lazy and then I also started my job. So it just didn't happen. But, oh and also my Adobe Creative Cloud membership expired from school. It, I can't reap the benefits of my university anymore and getting free things. But it, it'll happen when it happens. The episode will come out when it comes out. What I wanted to talk about today is a continuation of the last thing I was talking about, which was reconnecting with, um, I'm just going to call them my previous partner because we kind of, we kind of were, we kind of, we kind of were. <laughs> um, like I had said, they reached out and we chatted for the night on Friday and then, um, it made me really overwhelmed. So I ended that conversation. Like it, it, it wasn't anything serious. It was just like, hey, I'm feeling overwhelmed talking with you in a good and odd way. I'm gonna go to bed. But something that happened after that was, I don't know what happened reopening, reopening communication with this person did, but I started to like think about them a lot, like a lot, a lot. And all of these older feelings rushed back into me and I felt myself feeling upset and feeling that I was still in love with them. And it was really hard because I'm like, okay, well, the communication's back open, so this person could text me anytime they want now, and I don't know if I have the emotional capacity to open my phone and see a message from them and then have another conversation with them and trying to pretend like everything's normal, but it's not for me because some of these feelings come back in waves and I have to deal with that, and, you know, they don't, or from what I understand, they don't. So I was kind of just having a really overwhelming thought process every night going to bed because as we all know, the thoughts get worse when you try to go to bed for some fucking reason. For some fucking reason. I can't go to sleep. I have to think about this person. I have to think about her. I just want to go to bed. I just want to go to fucking bed. So um, it was yesterday and I, I was at work yesterday and it was just myself um, in the store and I'm usually like when I am employed I, I am not on my phone while I'm at work but I do check it at this job I do check it every now and then like if I go into the back of the store I just like take a quick glance at my phone to see if my manager texted me or if there's anything in the company group chat that I need to look at um, because I like to be her name's Jennifer. I like to be responsive for Jennifer because I love her. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I was just, you know, it was a little slow in the morning. So I was just by myself and I was trying to occupy myself with my, with my little tasks. Right. And I was just getting more and more and more and more overwhelmed because I was like, I have these feelings for this person having this form of communication open for me is not working it's not working and like we only talked that one time it's just the idea of having it open 
is so awful for me right now. And so then I was like, okay, well, I need to listen to myself and I can't just push through this. And so I went and I sent them a message and I was like, hey, hey, turns out I can't have this form of communication open with you. Let's try letters. Let's try that one. But I can't have this form of communication open with, you, open with you because I fear that I still have feelings for you. And in order for me to move past this, I got to close this communication off for the time being and I will let you know when I'm ready. And of course she was beautifully supportive and she was like, yeah, that's totally okay. Like you let me know when you're ready and we can try letters for right now. And I was like, And then we humorously texted back and forth um, until communication was closed off there. Um, so, the next thought process that I was just trying to remember where I was going with this. <laughs> the next set of thoughts I had after that was like, it definitely made me feel a lot better to close that off because I think I need to leave it that way until I'm ready. And to be honest, let's, let's get our schedule back up. This is what I would like to focus on. All of, all of this work I'm doing, that's therapy. This is my work schedule. The week of the 22nd in September, it is September right now. September, September right now. Um, yeah, the week of fucking the 22nd is going to be crazy for me. It's going to be crazy because um, my company, company, my, my store, um, they're going to a local fair at that time. So uh, I'm working extra hours in the store to be in the store. Um, I, I'm realizing how much I love my job and how much like it's the simplest it's the simplest thing and it provides me such a beautiful sense of independence that I haven't had before um and that's what I would like to focus on I like to focus on reconnecting with myself in a singular individual way and I think this job is really going to help me and especially I can have a routine and a schedule and everything I'm very excited to be structured um and I'm hoping after some time I can pick up some more hours and then work towards getting a place of my own and then get a cat, I got a cat. Um, but the next set of thoughts I had after that, which was last night, because today is Labor Day, um, was I was like, I just don't understand why I have these feelings for this person. I. I have like it's it's like I'm reminding myself that we're not compatible in that way, but it's almost like that thought doesn't matter to me. Like I try to remind myself of the nature of our relationship that we had with each other and I'm like it wasn't good. It wasn't good, but I'm happy that we both understand that we are beautiful baseline friends. And I want to continue that, but then I keep backtracking and I'm like, "Oh, but it was so good." It was so and it wasn't. And then I'm like, "What is going on? Like what what is actually happening up here?" So this was one of those um, one of those nighttime thoughts where like I'm trying to go to sleep and I'm like, can you shut can you shut up? Can you shut go to bed? Literally go to bed. But I was doing uh, the mental gymnastics so that I could just subside these thoughts and then go to bed. And I was thinking, because I was trying to figure it out, right? So I was thinking, I was like, you know what? You know what I'm probably feeling right now? It's not that I'm still in love with this person. I love them very much, but I'm not in love with them anymore. What I'm thinking about is that for years upon years, I have been yearning for a female relationship. I have been in, in the background of my mind. I have been wanting to be in love with a woman and be with a woman for years. And then I finally had it. And I can't have it right now, not anymore, because it didn't work with this person. And I need to take the time that I need to heal and become a better person. But I'm getting these waves of feelings, wanting to go back to, you know, this person in this romantic way, because 
I've wanted to be with a woman for so long. I have been a lesbian for years, but I needed to have these experiences prior um, to being with a woman because I needed it. And again, for my past partners who were men, it's not that I love them any less, I'm just gay. I'm just gay. And, um, but those were experiences that I needed to have. But I keep, I, I'm working on now separating these thoughts and emotions because I'm like, it's not actually about her. It's not actually about her. It's about how I finally fulfilled my life's prophecy of being with a woman for like a serious, like, even though we weren't anything um, concrete with each other, it was still serious and it was still a romantic relationship and it was still a partnership and it was still everything that I wanted. And it hurt so much giving that up. And when you're in love with the person, like you kind of start to meld those things together where it's like, I didn't want to give you up. And that's not real. That's not true. It's okay to move on from this person. What I'm feeling is the grief and remorse for, you know, the lesbian relationship that I had. And I want that again. And it's sad. And I'm that clicked for me last night where it's like, it's not that I'm still in love with this person. I care about them a lot. It's not that I'm still in love with this person. It's that I am experiencing like the grief and the mourning of a female relationship. And they were the person who was in it with me. So I, I'm associating these feelings with them when it's not actually about them. And then it started to, I started to have these thoughts where I'm like, well, why was it so easy in, in my mind? Why did it look so easy? And it's probably not because I, like, I'm not, we're not in the same state anymore. I don't see them normally. But I was like, why does it look so easy for her to move on and not me? And I was like, well, Meredith, this person has been in multiple female relationships. Like, she was she was able to have the opportunity to date a couple women back in the day i wasn't because i went to a whitewashed rich high school where being gay was not a quirk it was something that people thought was gross so i wasn't really able to have a girlfriend and that's a lie i'm actually a big fat fucking liar i did have a girlfriend in high school but that relationship I, I never really count that as something that was real because I came out when I was like 14 or 15 and the girl that I was that I dated in high school for two months by the way two months um she was heavily closeted and had a lot of internalized homophobia and it almost just felt like she was taking me down with her so that relationship ended pretty abruptly and quickly as it should have so I still didn't really get the full experience you know um But that was like the only relationship I had. And plus all of the uh, gay people in my high school, we were all just buddies. None of us dated each other. We were all just buddies because we were like, well, we're already ostracized as it is. Why don't we just like be friends with each other? And none of us had a romantic interest in each other. Or maybe people, maybe they, had, who knows? Who knows? I really <laughs> all I know is that they were all the loveliest people and I was friends with all of them. Um, but it's probably easier for her because she has been able to like experience this part of herself more than I have. This is, like I said, this is my first real female relationship. And so the feelings that I'm feeling are so much stronger than her because I haven't experienced this before. And like I said, I'm doing my best to separate these feelings from her because it's not actually about her. There were many beautiful things about our relationship and I have so much love for this woman. I do. Um, I know for a fact that my love has shifted into a friendship, but I am now experiencing new emotions that my brain finds it so easy to mesh with her. And it's not actually about her. 
um, that's what I'm going through right now. So when I'm able to come to a stable point with myself where I'm like, <laughs> when I'm able to do that with myself yeah I'll reach back out I just know it's not right now I think I need like a week or two to really figure it out and I also want to get into the groove of my work schedule um because working there is just so much fun for me I enjoy it a lot um and especially because this is a crazy month I'm gonna be making a good amount of money which I'm excited about. I'm excited to have an income. I can't even express to you how excited I am. Uh, but today, oh, this is why I need to start making a schedule. Today, um, I need to get back into the groove of exercising because I haven't exercised all week. Weekend, weekend. Let's back that one up really quickly. <laughs> um, because I haven't been in a, this is like kind of customer service, sales associate position. I haven't been in a strictly customer service job in a store in a long time. So I haven't been on my feet that much. Like just standing and walking and idling and doing little tasks. Um, my previous jobs have been, you know, like I like sit at a desk for however many hours. So I'm not used to being on my feet that much. So when I come home from work, I'm very tired. Or at least it's not it's not that I'm like extremely tired. It's just I cannot be on my feet anymore. And I think I need to start wearing more supportive shoes or I need to go invest into invest in, you know, like some inserts into my shoes. But I want to wear the cute shoes to work and I don't want to wear sneakers. <laughs> so I think I want to get into the groove of being at work and working and go to therapy two more times before I reconnect with this person just so I can get everything straight with myself. So that's where we're at. Um, I feel like I always record these videos um, on a second hair day where it's a little scraggly and weird looking but you're getting the full authentic Meredith and this is it. <laughs> um, let's do this right now. I have uh, one, of my fr one of my friends got me a flower press for my birthday or the holidays a long time ago. And um, another thing I've realized about myself spending all this time reconnecting with myself is that I am a major planner when it comes to birthday gifts and holiday gifts. I have a box in the other room dedicated to gifts I want to give people when the holiday season comes. And I've actually been drying out some flowers for this, this person. I've been talking about this entire time. I've been drying out these specific flowers. I actually went around town and I went to public spaces and I cut them and I took them home with me. Um, because when they visited me here, they took a real liking to these flowers. And before they go out of season, I wanted to take a couple home and then make them a little bouquet for the, the holidays and their birthday. And I went and I dried, or I, I pressed them to dry um, a couple of these flowers so I can send them in letters to my friends. Oh. They look like little butterflies. How sweet is that? And there's a bigger one on this one. Well, these look beautiful. Anyway, okay, now I'm done. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I hope you have a good day. I feel like I always look grimy when I make these videos because you're catching me second day here. It always falls on a day in which it's the second day of my hair. Um, 
It's 11 a.m. No reason for me to be yawning. It's 11 a.m. Um, I haven't made a video in a while. What did David say? Because I just looked. Okay. Today's the 10th of September. The last video I made was on the 2nd. I don't know what I was talking about. I haven't looked at my videos in a while. It's the same thing where my Adobe Creative Cloud membership is expired. So I think I've just been reluctant to finding an alternative to put these videos together. But I will. It'll happen this week. Couldn't do it last week. Things happened last week. Um, but I can't really remember what I was talking about. But I will say, I haven't talked to my phone in a little bit, so we're, we're going to talk for a little bit. I don't guarantee it to be the very, this, this video to be very long. Um, but last week, my mom uh, had to go to the hospital, and that's something I'm not going to talk about, because First of all, it's family related, and I'm not too interested in talking about family related stuff on here. Also because the issue we faced with my mom going to the hospital was just, it sucked. So, um, that was a lot for me. That was a lot for my family. She's back now, she's okay, but It's hard. It's hard. Other than that, I love my job. My job's really awesome. <laughs> this is only the second weekend that I've worked there. Um, I don't know, it's really hot. Um, but I love it. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this before. I didn't know that I would be working in the store alone by myself during my shifts um but i love it it's so nice it's such a nice form of independence for myself i'm really enjoying being able to work in a store by myself for a day um i meet a lot of really nice people a lot of really nice people come into the store. Um, I'm also already meeting regular shoppers who come in all the time. And like, I'm only working weekends, but it's weird that I've seen you two weekends in a row already. Um, and what's really nice for me is that um, families will bring like their young kids into the store and they're really good about, I don't wanna use the word managing, but they're really good at managing their kids in the store. Um, because it is a crystal store and if they drop something and it breaks like it's it's okay if it's um, like 10 20 bucks right it's not okay if it's like forty dollars <laughs> so what's been really really nice for me to see is like the level of confidence that these little six-year-old kids have when they come into the store because I remember when I was six I was just this huge ball of anxiousness and I believe until maybe I was like 13 or 14 my mom was still ordering for me in restaurants it was like pulling teeth for me to go and ask a store attendant for help like I, I couldn't start any conversations with people it was bad it was really bad I was really really anxious as a kid and that went on for a really long time but what is so healing for me to see is these like six-year-old kids come into the store and they're asking me questions. They're like, they'll grab something random and come up to me and be like, what's this one? And I'll be like, that's cherry quartz. And they'll be like, okay, I like that means something. And then they put it back. And then they come up with them. And they're like, what's this one? I'm like, oh, that's hematite. And they're like, okay. And they'll walk away. <laughs> it's the cutest thing. Um, yesterday at work, this family came in with their son and he must have been like maybe five years old. And it was just them in the store and me, so he was obviously very comfortable and he was getting a little rowdy. And uh, it got to the point where, like, these parents were trying to shop, but their son kept asking them all of these questions and running around the store and all this stuff. 
And I was like, for the safety of the store and for the safety of these parents' sanity, I will be, I'll, I'll be a babysitter for 10 minutes. Like, I don't mind. And so I went up to this kid. <laughs> I went up to him and I was like, what's your favorite color? And he was like speaking gibberish to me. And I was like, what's your favorite color? Quickly, quickly, what's your favorite color? And he was like, red. And I was like, okay, we're finding red things around the store. We have to go find red things right now. And he was like, okay. And so we were going around the store and I'm like, boom, mahogany obsidian. Or is it Jasper? I think it was mahogany Jasper. And I was like, look, don't touch it. Don't touch it. We're looking, we're gazing at it and we're moving on. And then we go to another section. And when we get to the incense section, we would take the boxes out that had the color and we would sound out the words together and then we put it back. We'd go over to the candle section, I'm like red candle, quick sniff. And he would sniff it and it'd be like, what do you think? And he's like, it's good. I'm like, okay, we're putting it back. And we go right around the store. We go to the bracelets. And then we would find red bra bracelets. And then I would try them all on his wrists. His wrists are so small. And he's like, they don't fit. I'm like, they don't fit. We gotta put them back. So we put them back. And then I'm like, okay, second favorite color. And he was like, Ello. It, it was yellow, but he said Ello. And I was like, okay. And we did the same thing for like four colors. Um, and he was so excited to the point where like, at one point, this was so sweet. He started to hold my hand and I was like, oh. <laughs> so we're holding hands around the store, um, looking at crystals together. And he was really good about it where I was, I, like I was jokingly firm with him. I was like, don't touch that, what are you doing? He was like, I'm like, I'm kidding. He was like, I know. Like, <laughs> um, so it's so fun. I, I think my favorite thing about my job is interacting with the kids because it's rare that like little children come into the store but it's funny because when they do come into the store, like 90% of the time they're with their mom and their mom has brought them into the store multiple times. So they know what to do. Um, and you just get to chat it up with kids. Like, it's so fun. I don't think, um, I, I've never really been someone who has been able to have much of like a span of patience for children. Mainly because I think I, I think I tried, I, I used to work in childcare. Um, I worked at an after school program for a couple months. Um, and I remember that was hard for me because they kind of just throw you in there. And I had like little to no experience with kids. And I was also still in a state of anxiousness. So I didn't have much of an ability to go and interact with children. So that's why I just, for a long period of my you know life said that I don't like kids and it's true I kind of don't like them but when I get like the type of kids that come into the crystal store I'm like you guys are cool like you guys are cool I'm, I'm gonna talk to you because you're cool I've also realized that I, I've always been really good with young boys I don't know why that is but I think it's because actually I have no idea I, I can't even give you a reason why, but I've always been, like, I, I've always been really good with younger boys. Um, they're just fun to be around. They're really rowdy. And, and when, like, someone humorously makes fun of them, rather than their parents just being like, hey, cut it out. Me being like, what are you doing? What, what's going on? What are we doing? And they go, oh, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> um, I think they, they take it a bit easier when I go at it from a lens of humor rather than their parents are doing it from um like a being reprimanding their kids uh so that's been fun uh i also love the regulars that come into the store they're also nice and we get um like tarot readers that come into the store as well and they're also really lovely to be around i love working there it's so fun other than that um, I don't remember how much I talked about this, but, um, I might have, who knows? I don't really have the energy to re-explain it right now, so I'm just going to get right into it. Um, I asked the person, right, for an apology, like a week ago, because I had realized that throughout the time in which we spent together I never got like a true sit down apology and accountability from this person like they never went I'm sorry I did this and that 
I apologize. Like that, those phrases never really came out of their mouth throughout the duration of our time together. And even in their letter, I'm sure I mentioned this, even in their letter, like my letter was around like seven pages of taking accountability for a bajillion things. And even on our call too. And then their letter was three pages of them telling me how I made them feel, which is great, but you also equally contributed to everything we experienced. So I would love to hear an apology from you as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so I asked and then their response was, um, okay, like I'm gonna write you a letter. And my first instinct was to be like, no, no, I'm not accepting a letter from you. You're not gonna make me wait a fucking week to get a response from you again. Do you know how grueling that is? Dragging me through this fucking shit? And that was my first reaction. And that's true. Like, I didn't want them to write me a letter. I didn't want that at all. I wanted them to, like, talk with me about it. But I asked my friend for advice, and she was like, Meredith? I was like, what? She was like, you consciously asked this person to provide another extension of themselves of themselves to apologize to you and recognize what they've done to you you also knew exactly what the outcome was going to be and you asked for an apology you can't make someone apologize to you and when you ask for it you forfeit you kind of forfeit the right to dictate what the apology, like the format of the apology. So if she wants to write you a letter, she's going to write you a letter. And you can't really get mad about that because she's, a, she's a, from what we understood at the time, like she's going to write you something and hopefully it's going to be an apology. And you can't get mad that she chose to write it because it's no longer your place to dictate like it's not your place to dictate what the apology looks like and I was like fine fine and so I was like cool I will see your letter in the mail got the letter in the mail yesterday yesterday she sent it out on Friday today's Tuesday so I got it on Monday also supposed to get my copy of we party in the mail on monday didn't get it still in transit i looked it up on ups <laughs> um read the letter and it was like a page and a half of her apologizing for everything literally it was a page and a half of her apologizing for everything and i was like huh I didn't think that was gonna happen. <laughs> I, I remember I was really nervous about it because like I, I was like, I don't know what this letter's gonna be, but I, I think I, it would be in my best interest to see this in a positive light because she she agreed to, like she agreed to write me something. Um, it was a page and a half of her apologizing for so many things. And I texted her last night and I was like, I got your letter in the mail today. I appreciate what you said. Thank you for writing it. Um, I think I haven't heard you use this kind of language before. Like the direct, here is what I apologize for language. I haven't heard that before. And I think I needed that. And I was reluctant to bring this up to you because I didn't want to reopen this, you know? But I knew that if I didn't, it would just eat away at me. Um, because it would. I would have to continue, or, or I wouldn't, I would choose not to. Like this was, this was a huge deciding factor for me, um, for continuing to be friends with this person, where I was like, I've never gotten that direct language before of them apologizing to me. So it's gonna be hard for me to wanna be friends with them because if I choose to remain friends with them, this little tidbit of information is going to eat away at me while I'm friends with them because I'm going to be waiting for an apology and they're not going to give me one because they don't know that I need one. They don't know that I need that direct language. So I would have gone down that route or I would have gone down the route of, hey, let's permanently separate. 
because this isn't working for me and I wouldn't give them the explanation of what I needed. And so I fucking bit that bullet and I sent them that message a week ago. Got that letter today, yesterday. I lied. I got that letter yesterday. Um, and it was kind of just exactly what I asked for, <laughs> which is crazy. It never fucking happens where I ask for something and I get exactly what I asked for. That's so fucking rare, dude. Um, but I got that. And yeah, so. That's about everything. My sister's home with COVID as well. Initially, I was like, oh, why, are you bringing this home? why are you bringing this here? You live in Boston. Um, but she just got a new roommate. And um, it's not the biggest apartment space. Like, it's in certain spaces, it's pretty small. So, when, you know, being home, like, she's able just to, like, be in her room. And then when none of us are around, like, she can go downstairs and have a free space in the kitchen to, like, do whatever she needs. So, I get it. Um, but I think it's funny. Like, my sister came home with COVID, and my mom came home from the hospital, and my dad and I were like, what the fuck? <laughs> so. I need to get back on a schedule this week, because last week with, um, all the hospital stuff, it's not that I didn't do the things that I wanted to do, like, I still exercised, and I did little crafts, and I did all the other things, but, um... I think I just needed to be more direct and not have an emotional weight on my shoulders while I'm doing it. Alright, almost 20 minutes. You know, whenever, it's like going into therapy. When you're like, I don't know what to talk about. And then you start talking and an hour goes by. That's just what happened. That's all I've got for right now. Who knows what's going to happen next. Hooray. <laughs> my blanket is falling. Um. <laughs> hey. Um. That was Winston. Oh. <laughs> I just posted episode nine of my reflection series, and I um feel mildly reluctant to promote it as I usually do which is where I just put it on my Instagram story and that's it um I think I'd rather just let people naturally find this one because it's so uh outdated at this point because I've been going through some shit and you know my main focus wasn't to post a video I'm also in a reset day which is why I look kind of silly right now I don't. I look pretty normal for what it looks like me being home. So we're going to back that one up. <laughs> um, so the videos that are taken in this episode, I'm going to turn my sound off. They're from like mid to the end of August. And it's September 18th. And you know, so many of my feelings and um, emotions have changed since then. And I think that's why I find myself a little bit reluctant to really promote this one. Because I'm like, this one is from, like, these videos, the latest one is from, like, two weeks ago. So I don't find myself necessarily interested in, I, I, I want to post it and have it a part of the series, but I don't find myself interested in really telling people about this one unless they naturally find it themselves and they can watch things in order. Um... Another thing that, besides all the shit I was experiencing, another thing that was holding me back from posting that episode in a timely manner was, and I've talked about this before, uh, my Adobe uh, Creative Cloud membership expired. And I was like, how the fuck am I going to put these videos together? I can't, I don't think iMovie is a thing anymore. But then I realized uh, with my laptop, it came with Final Cut Pro, which is Apple's version of uh, software, like their film editing software. 
It's a little convoluted, I have to say, but it's actually super simple if you just put four videos next to each other and hit export, and that's all I need to do. If I wanted to do something more intricate on it, I would definitely have to spend more time researching how to use that, but I don't see myself doing that in the future, editing intricate things on that software. It just seems very counterintuitive and counterproductive as a film editing software. But like I said, very easy to just slap four videos next to each other and hit export, which is all I do. Uh, I'd have to remind myself what I was talking about in my last two clips. Yeah, one of them is talking about my work schedule. I'm gonna turn my sound on for a second on my laptop. What am I talking about? Oh, I guess I'm still, okay, there's that one. And then what's this one? Oh, oh yeah, that's, uh, yeah, okay. So <laughs> those two videos um, were also taken like a week and a half ago. I, st I still wanna include them in this. Oh, I was like, where's my dog? I would still like to include them in um, this, this episode. They're obviously, you already watched them if you're at this point. So, <laughs> but those two pieces of footage, the first one is from like two weeks ago, and then the second one is from, let's pull up the calendar. Let's pull that up. Oh, also two weeks ago. Okay, so both of those videos are from two weeks ago, I would say, about two weeks ago. Because it is the, I think I mentioned this, it's the 18th of September now. <laughs> uh I did put that in my calendar. I'm not going to that one. Obviously things have shifted and changed since then. I think the main thing I want to talk about right now is this massive shift in emotions that I've experienced. I, I think everything clicked and fell into place for me. This is why I enjoy reconnecting with my friends and going on calls and making sure that I'm keeping in contact with them because the community that you create for yourself dictates, not necessarily dictates, but helps you better conceptualize and understand yourself by who you surround yourself with. And I think about maybe a week ago, a week ago? No. Last Friday. Yes. Last Friday. Um, today's Wednesday. So it's like kind of almost a week. But uh, last Friday, I went on a call with one of my friends who I hadn't spoken to in a couple months. And the last time I had spoken to her was kind of like in the midst of everything with my I'm, the, I'm calling it my partner my re, my previous partner um so she knew some of the details of that situation she did not know what it's like now so we spoke about it and I let her know what was going on and I kind of went through the whole thing and it sort of clicked for me in that call where I was like I if I didn't have and I might have spoken about this before can't remember it's been a long time since I've done a, a video entry you know so excuse me if I'm repeating information however it's good information to keep in mind and remain aware of if I didn't have boundaries before everything happened with my previous partner I definitely have them now 100% have them now because let me pull my journal out I was journaling about this today now that I'm thinking about it, now that I think about it, because today has truly been um, such a great reset day for me because usually when I go through a work weekend, I my, my room becomes a fucking tornado, as you know, it usually does with a lot of people whenever you're preoccupied, especially with work. Uh, so I was cleaning and organizing and going through things and then... Um, I was like, well, I should do uh, an, in 
an entry because that's important. I haven't done it in a little bit. Uh, so let's talk about this. Last night, we're going to circle back to what I was talking about. Last night uh, at my work, we had a breathwork workshop for the full moon. I have never done breathwork before. And it is said to be a very vibrational, energy, potent, uh, emotional experience. And it was for me. Cried through, cried through the whole thing. Through the whole thing. Because my main intention was like, I want to release whatever is holding me back right now to move forward and be more firm in myself and my boundaries. And it happened. <laughs> and it really, I think going through that breath, breath work session really just thrusted me through that last step in the process to go into a better direction. Highly recommend doing breath work. Quite an emotional experience. I wouldn't want to do it regularly. I would want to do it like as a monthly cleanse, you know? But I had written, last night I attended a breath work session at my job. It was amazing and totally vibrational. I never expected to be moved so much. I cried during most of it. We did it for the full moon as a release. I went with the intention of releasing my previous partner and whatever's holding me in that moment. Oh, and the hold that she has on me. <laughs> um, I feel that this breathwork session was the last push I needed. I let it all out and left it behind. I felt that sense of release so truly within myself. I no longer feel pulled to respond to her messages immediately or reach out. We have a call planned for tomorrow, which is true. We do. Uh, because we... Oh, I might have talked about this. I reached back out to ask for accountability and apology. I'm so sure I've spoken about this. And um, that happened. And we had a, a, a slight rehash conversation about it. I got that letter in the mail. I'm so sure I talked about this. I got that letter in the mail and it was just exactly what I asked for. Like, she apologized and took accountability for things. But then we had a little bit of a rehash conversation where she was upset by the fact that I accused her of never taking accountability or apologizing for things. And I responded saying, hey, that's my experience. I don't have a clear moment in time or memory of you using direct language like this i understand that subtextually apologies and accountability was taken but the words were never used so please be aware and understand my experience through this and that also made me really fucking mad i was like why are you fucking bring this up again but i was i i was like i don't want to like really get into it i'm not interested and I, I even sent a message back. I was like, hey, whatever uh, residual feelings we're ha like we have about the situation, about our own personal experiences with each other, we keep that to ourselves from now on, unless it's truly necessary to share. But we decided to have um, a little catch up phone call as friends uh, tomorrow because we're moving towards continuing to take space. And then this amount of space is gonna be a couple months which I suggested because I think it's needed <laughs> and I want that. Uh, yeah, we have a call planned for tomorrow to catch up with each other until we take space for a couple months. I feel, I truly feel released and I can move on. Um, I remember having a conversation with Jill, my sister, where she asked me where my motivation was coming from in terms of the situation we're facing right now. I've never really been intensely motivated in, for uh, the topic of discussion my sister and I were having a while ago. And I was speaking to her about how I felt about what we were experiencing together and how I felt a certain need to do something about what we were experiencing, right? Because I don't really wanna talk about it. Um, and she asked, she was like, where is this motivation coming from? You've never really been motivated to do something about this in the past. Where is this coming from? And in the moment, I wrote this in my journal. In the moment, I kind of pulled some pieces of information together because I don't think I fully understood why I was so motivated to do something. 
And I was like, well, I'm tired of this cycle continuing and I'm tired of experiencing this and seeing my family hurt by this and I wanna do something about it for once and now that I have the space and the time and all of these things are true, right? But it didn't feel like the actual core of why I wanted to do something. And then I figured it out while I was on this call with my friend, Maddie, um, love her so much. And um, I wrote, but what I've realized is that my motivation has come from this whole situation with my previous partner. I will never allow someone to push me past my limits like that again. I will never allow someone to be so inconsiderate of me. No one will ever push my boundaries like that again. Even if I had little to no concept of my own, it doesn't matter. I won't let it happen again with anyone. In a way, I feel relieved and released from this issue. I am excited to spend more time with myself and fully get to know, you know, whoever I speak to next uh, before I pursue them. I know what is important to me now. No one will ever get the chance to do anything like this again. Uh, and what's a good feeling is, and this, I don't know if anyone else ever experiences this, but I remember, you know, it, it's probably a universal concept and I'm not gonna pretend like this is new. Every single breakup I've had for the next month or so, uh, that person that I had just broken up with shows up in my dreams. And this is the first time I've experienced this previous partner showing up in my dreams, obviously, and me waking up and feeling sad. Um, sad that the only connection, only physical connection I have with them now is through my dreams. And I wrote this in my journal because this person did show up in my dream last night. Um, what's a good feeling is that this person showing up in my dreams, what's a good feeling? Oh yeah, is when this person shows up in my dreams. You know, maybe I can just stop trying to actively correct my grammar and read what I wrote because it's already correct. It's already, anyway. What's a good feeling is this person showing up in my dreams and when I wake up, I don't feel anything about it, no matter what happens in the dream. Because you can't help what happens in your dreams sometimes. For me, I kind of can, um, but we can have a dream conversation later. We can have a conversation about my dreams later. But that's what I've been figuring out right now. I feel such confidence and power in standing for my own now and being firm in who I am. And I say all these things, sorry, there's a sticky spot on my desk. Ew. Um, I say all these things with confidence and my, the language that I'm using sounds a little bit harsh towards this person. But this is something I have forgiven and moved past on where we went through what we went through I didn't appreciate a lot of the actions that this person took. They definitely, and I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, they definitely unconsciously pushed me past my limits multiple times and presented an air of, inconsideration is definitely not a word, but being inconsiderate of me and they were unaware of that, or maybe they were after the fact, couldn't really tell you, all of this stuff and, and pushing pushing my boundaries even though i had little concept of what they were a lot of these things were happening and i'm at the point where i have forgiven these things where we were both in a state of just emotional wrecks right so we couldn't necessarily help what was going on all we can do now is recognize it and understand how we want to move forward with that information and what i know is that i will never fucking let someone do that to me again whether they're aware of it or not. And again, my previous partner was not aware of it. And I firmly state that because we've talked about it and I understand that. And I also respect her as a person and I want us to take our time, lots of time away from each other to heal and move forward. But this is also an important realization to have for me. I'll never fucking let someone do that to me again. I will never ever let that happen again. That's so, like what I experienced is so fucked up, even though it was out of our hands and neither of our faults, you know, it's fucked up. 
it's fucked up and I'll never let that happen again. And I guess that's why I take such a hard stance on everything else in my life right now, especially things that I wasn't particularly motiv motivated about previously. It's not happening. It's not happening. It's never fucking happening again. I will be moving forward with confidence and with a firm sense of my own boundaries because I deserve that. And because I deserve to know myself well enough to say no to something or set the tone before I enter something. Um, I'm even, I'm doing it right now in, in my life and I really, really appreciated that breath work session because it was the last little push I needed where I was like, I'm out, I'm done, the emotions are released, I've moved on, I'm separated. You know, like, <laughs> and I, I mean, that's, that's probably one of the reasons why I'm a little bit reluctant to be public about my previous episode, episode nine, because all of that stuff happened end of August and It still happened, but you know, I don't really feel the need to really let people know that it happened right now, unless they find it on their own, then cheers, you know, enjoy. But yeah, I'm, I'm feeling really good, feeling really confident. I'm so glad that I was able to push past these emotions and rely on myself more confidently and not go through these phases of hurt and despair that like, I want this person back in my life and I want to be friends with them and I want to keep talking with them. It's not that I don't want that. It's just, I don't need that right now. I don't need this person in my life and I want to take that space. But I also would like to leave off on a good note and goof off for an hour and giggle with her before we go silent for a couple months. Um, and I think definitely after that breathwork session, a lot of my spirituality is coming back and it's interesting. And I mean, it also couples with the fact that I work at a crystal store and you're just surrounded by spiritual people and spiritual objects and things for the entire day that you're there. But I think that breathwork session really pushed me in this direction where I'm like, dude, tarot decks out on the windowsill, crystals out on the window, we're charging shit now. We're charging shit. I'm doing readings. Oh my God. I just found my pendulums and I had left like knots in the chains for so long, took those knots out, pay respect to your pendulums guys. And um, I, I, I feel confident and I feel strong in the boundaries that I have now. And I'm excited to actually get to know someone before I pursue something with them. Cause that's something I'm realizing. There's been a pattern in my past, I've, I've now been in four relationships. There's been a pattern in my past four relationships where, first of all, humorous pattern, all four of them didn't have a driver's license. I have consistently dated people who do not have a driver's license. That's weird. Four people in a row, no license. I have never been able to experience being a passenger princess. It's never happened. So hopefully my next person's got a fucking license. <laughs> um, but a pattern I experienced, I don't think I really experienced it with my first relationship. I had a girlfriend in high school and it lasted two months. And I don't normally count that as a relationship, but I do count it as a great learning experience, which I wish I took notes from at the time, but I was in high school. So of course I'm not gonna fucking listen to anything. But there's a pattern where, you know, I'd find myself attracted to someone and then we're both attracted to, to each other and we would spend maybe a couple days, not even a day together. And all of a sudden we are really intensely physically intimate with each other. And then a couple days later we're dating but I don't really know this person that well. I think I do, but I immediately feel so connected to them because we made out, we got frisky, we had sex, and now we're dating. And, you know, we're both largely connected to each other from that point moving forward, but we don't actually know anything about each other. Nothing too intimate, 
or nothing to you but you, you know what I'm saying and that's a I, I realized that you know that has really hurt me that's really hurt me and it's affected me really negatively because I'm so attached to this person that I don't know that well because we were intensely intimate 48 hours into knowing each other and that's something I don't want to do anymore that's something I actually can't do anymore because I've had issues you know having having sex with these people I've had issues having sex with them because I find myself kind of disassociating and freezing up and becoming too aware of what's going on and then I can't get anywhere you know but I've noticed that you know the further I go in my relationship with the person and the more I get to know them the more comfortable I get during sex which is a very normal thing that's very normal but I've learned that I need that understanding of the person I'm with and comfortability with the person I'm with in order to have a fun time during those experiences and sex isn't everything I don't like sex is fun right but it's not anything that I really need in a relationship I want to be emotionally connected to someone and I want to be comfortable with the person I'm with and I want to fully understand the person I'm with and I know that moving forward I need to make that effort for myself to fully get the get to know the person I'm spending time with and I'm getting to know and planning on pursuing I don't want to start a relationship with someone that I don't know too much about and the only reason why I'm with them at the time is because there is you know some semblance some semblance some I'm gonna use the word remnants because I think that's what I'm thinking of right now there's like some remnants of like connection with each other and interest but there's more often than not a sexual attraction to this person I can't base a relationship off of sexual attraction anymore because it's negatively affected me all of this to say um feeling good feeling confident you know happy to be here happy to move forward <laughs> um but yeah that's what i've got going on and i always want to make it clear so much time has passed since these past couple videos have come out even these um oh he's stretched winston's on my bed right now so much internal change for the better has happened especially since these last two videos that you saw previously um because that last video where I was wearing my college sweatshirt, that must have been like a week and a half ago, two weeks. I believe it was two weeks ago. Uh, but yeah, things are going up, guys. Things are changing and I'm excited. 